Hi, my name is Colleen Quinn. I'm a couturier and a painter and also a digital artist. I live in San Francisco. My name is Arkady Polizhaev. I'm a fashion designer based on California, San Jose. My passion for fashion was just all about the human body and all about movement and about fabrics and design. I actually am a teacher. That's something that I love to do as well. And I'm teaching French couture. I used to be a ballroom dancer, professional ballroom dancer, with lots of titles, including world champion. And it was always in me being a fashion designer. And once I moved to California, once I met with this beautiful Colleen Queen, this is when my other desire started. He is one of my students. And we'll be going to Shanghai for 10 days. I never been in China before, but I heard lots of beautiful and good things about this country. It's definitely, I'm looking for the Shanghai dumplings. I think I'll eat like a hundred every day. <laughs> every country has their uh, specific taste, specific food, and I'm very much looking forward to see traditional food. Colleen and I, uh, we started at the bottom. So 10 years ago, I went to Guizhou. I was able to learn all about their culture, especially the minority ethnic groups, the Miao and the Bui villages. It educated me in a way that I learned about the past history, and now I'm coming to Shanghai and transforming this and learning about how it is in modern fashion in China. So I'm coming almost full circle, and it's very inspiring for me and very educational, and also it just kind of holds a big part of my Chinese culture as well. I'm looking forward to traveling to Shanghai. The special part of it is because we'll be learning about the cheap house. The Chi Pao has always been a mystery to me because I'm American born and I would only see the Chi Pao on my mother. It meant something to me but yet I wasn't sure how to have that uh, connection together with my Chinese culture in some ways. So did I see that? I love it. So elegant. I want this. See that? You I had such a beautiful experience meeting Cecilia Chang. She's a legendary. She's a courageous, bold woman that came to America and she brought in the northern cuisine. It was really good for San Francisco as well as the whole world to understand what is true Chinese cuisine. And she shared her journeys of her life through her cheap house. This my mother gave to me for my wedding. I came here not only upgrade the Chinese food restaurant and I think also I want Chinese cheap to so work. So that went hand in hand with yeah. your food the, and the cheap And so a lot yes. of people, they look at me, they say, oh, it's amazing. We didn't know Chinese dress could be that beautiful. You set the standards high for yeah, Chinese. Yeah, yeah. Each Chi Pao had her own little diary of her life, and she was so vibrant and so joyful. All my life, I've been wearing Chi Pao. She's like a grandmaster. She's like a woman that I would always want to be like. She taught me to, to just be creative and to be artful and to just live your life as art. Good taste is uh, something I think money cannot buy. Either you have it or you don't. The Chi Pal has been just a great fascination, so this trip is going to be very nurturing for me. I'm very much looking forward to learn and understand the pattern of this dress. I'm very much excited about upcoming trip because I can't wait to see everything, people, fashion designers, patterns, fabrics, Chi Pao dresses, and I think right now, this is the time for me to start packing, and I will see you there. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. And you know that this will in definitely inspire me. As a basic, yes, right? Exactly. And then just create. Paintbrush strokes through her thread. Okay, you are definitely a couture house. This is beautiful. Oh. And you know, you just 
stroke the color and on the fabric. Um, the print versus that, yeah. And they always use snaps, you know? That's like so beautiful. Today was just an enchanting day. It's such an honor to be here in Shanghai because this is where the birth of Chipao is. Shanghai is the largest city in China by population and the second most populous city proper in the world. With a population of 26 million as of 2019 and its global financial center and transport hub with the world's busiest container port. As I stepped out of the car and into the Yuyuan Garden, it was like this live energy that came. It was hustling and bustling, people around shopping. I've been traveling all over the world and I saw so many different countries and people. This place gives me the most special feelings. I felt that when we stepped right into that garden, everything was so historical, like I went back in time. It's not just a beautiful place. This place has lots of history here. We first entered into the tea garden, and it's the oldest garden there. It's not just a beautiful area. You can also taste and feel the culture here. We walked around the mall area, and there were so many different merchants there. One of the places we stopped making scarf from silk, the color, the pattern, traditional Chinese pattern. It's about scarves, it's about silk. That's beautiful. We try traditional food. This is this like friend, really well known friend. in Shanghai. They're known the Shanghai Bao um, dumplings, the Shanghai dumplings. They're my favorite. Right. Okay. This is the best here too. Amazing. The second part of the day was very emotional actually for me because I saw in person traditional Chinese dress called Chi Pao. Kalin, what do you like the most about Chi Pao dress? Oh, okay, so I love, of course, the mandarin collar, the high mandarin collar. It's, it's a, very beautiful, yeah. And I have a fetish for collars, of course, so definitely that attracts me, and as well as the detail of the frogs. I mean, they're just so breathtaking, they're handmade. I definitely love the silhouette, for sure, because, you know, it's when it's tailored and you do see the shape of a woman's body, it's so sophisticated, it's so sleek. I like the combination of look, like yes, all these details. That's beautiful. Right? I love the two tone, definitely. I am kind of attracted wow. to this one too. Look at this one, Arkady. So this is Ooh. like a traditional, but in the back it's something different. Absolutely. So yes. why not have utilize the design um, front as tradition, but then in the back becomes innovation. So this is the first time I've ever seen a chi pao with watercolor as well as such refined embroidery too. I love this one too is because of the watercolor and you know oh that this will in definitely inspire me because of my watercolors and how exactly. it mixes but they're just so original. Let's look at this one though, the embroidery on this which is just absolutely well, gorgeous. You know, this is Chinese embroidery, day. it's like... From the first day when I was introduced to embroidery, I'm just mesmerized all the time. Yes. How much work it takes. It's absolutely this amazing. This is an art piece. It's such an art piece, yes. And you know, I'm a couturier, and this is truly an art. I was able to work with Miss Zhang to create a chipao for me. And with that experience, I was able to be a part of their world and to experience how to measure, as well as their process in design, which gave me great respect and gratefulness because I understand the process of creation as well. I help her 
to choose the color, choose the design, pattern. I chose this beautiful classic Chi Pao in black, and I know that this is going to be a timeless piece. Beautiful, of course. So we walked into Atelier Space where the workers are, and I got to see all the tailors, and each tailor was making one design each. I saw how one person was making patterns, another one was working on men's blazer. One seamstress was just making only the seams, and she was fusing the seams to give that support. Then I also saw another tailor, which she was draping the piece and making sure that it fit perfectly before it was given out to the client. This is holding our lineage, our Chinese lineage of craftsmanship, and they are going to be continuing this and preserving this craft. After visiting Atelier, our next stop was city center store called Hangi Store. It's a very little store. And everything inside was just organized so well. Each chi pao was in a garment bag and definitely ironed and pressed. I saw how this dress is made in this atelier and then I saw the product in a store where you can walk in and you can choose beautiful pieces, handmade pieces, tailored with traditional embroideries with traditional silhouettes, traditional colors. Hangi is the first store to put embroidery on Chi Pao. I love the movement. Look at this embroidery this. here. It is, it's so beautiful. Right? So the time it takes from the embroidery to making this, there's just so much to this uh, that it's definitely a unique piece very extraordinary and also the finishing. If you notice, there's the matte color as well as the satin finish on the edging. That just gives that little sheen. Just this today was just full of abundance for me and inspiration that I can't imagine what's going to happen the next day and the next. So I'm so looking forward to sharing this with you. Today was just a lovely day. It was very relaxing. We stopped by this beautiful store called Long Fang. I saw these exuberant, beautiful cheap house. So royal and regal. The quality of dresses, the quality of work is just amazing. I do feel that this was the highest form of craftsmanship that I've seen so far in the cheap house. It's like a little atelier, couture house, because it has so many varieties of Chi Pao dresses. The Chi Pao and the Cheng Sun describes the body-hugging Chinese dress. And in the 1920s and 30s, it was very popular in Shanghai. And the characteristics of the Chinese Chi Pao is inspired by the Manchu origin. And Chinese socialites and upper-class women invested in these in Shanghai. Both Chi Pao and Cheng Sun describe the same fitted dress worn by Chinese women. The original Chi Pao dress will be fitted dress and hung on A-line, mostly covering woman's body. You can only see hands, toes, and head. And I noticed that they were mostly for bridal, and it's to the highest form. I felt like the workmanship and the craftsmanship was just perfection. For traditional bridal, usually it is something like a, a dragon and a phoenix. Particularly, I really loved a lot was the Sujo embroidery. It was just breathtaking. Besides these beautiful structures and shapes and colors and embroideries, I also saw beautiful traditional Chinese buttons. The pan ko, the frog. It was like this 3D dimensional button. It's not just a button, you know, because when you look close, up close into this one, you understand they're like a little story. So it's like every button has a little story. I saw the zodiacs, you know, the Chinese horoscope, Pan Ko, which was lovely. And that's just really Chinese old craft couture in a way that I've never seen in the United States before. And it drew me in because that's our culture.
After we left Longfang, our car stopped in this little street. Almost like an old village and in some form, kind of very humble. When we walked in into this house, I just saw the uh, room with a beautiful table and with a lot of beautiful women around this table. And they had each one wearing their cheap house with a fan. They were also just so finished, and I felt like I stepped into Shanghai 1920s. It feels like I'm in a movie with beautiful actresses around me wearing this beautiful dress. You can just be part of it. My friend Colleen said that so we are in the class right now, and this uh, teacher and beautiful woman Miss Wong, she will teach us. And she wore her beautiful black chi pao. The way she talked, her manners, the way she looked, it's absolutely uh, mesmerizing. She talked about um, the history of the chi pao and also about the 1920s and 30s and 40s and 50s. And then she also kind of took us down back to the um, past, how it evolved. And so she went through quickly the dynasties and there was the, the Ming and the Qing and then how it evolved from straight into the body figure. In one of the pictures she said that this is my mom. Her mother was also a very important part of her life and learning about the Qi Pao too. After that I found out is she's a Qi Pao etiquette teacher as well. And then she starts explaining and talking about how women should behave wearing chipao dress. And we had a student there, and she was teaching her how to sit properly and how to position your legs and your knees and your feet. How you should sit up from the chair. How to carry your dress and almost like it's intact with you in an elegant way. All these movements you're making it's just because you're wearing this chi pao dress. So she taught me how to get into a car properly and how your legs supposed to move in a very flowing way, almost just effortlessly, and yet so smooth and very quiet. The most elegant I can ever be. <laughs> Mrs. Wong invited me to sit with her and she taught me as well. She was almost like this ancestral mother figure to me of my Chinese culture. And it was so delightful because her phrase was something about like the chi pao is the best gift that God could ever create and um, for a Chinese woman. Also, she said that I have been for the two past hours uh, a Shanghainese woman. That's so honoring and I will definitely carry this with me um, as I go forward coming back to the States. The next beautiful gift that she shared with us was the tea ceremony. There is a proper way of drinking the tea. For example, once you sit, once you fix your posture, you cannot move towards the cup. So you have to move this cup towards your lips. Really, it is about taste. Just a little sip is fine. This is so beautiful. I think it's just going so much together with the way you look wearing chipao dress, the way you sit. It's just a combination of everything. Today, I understand that it's much bigger than dress. Everything has a meaning. Every curve on this dress, every detail, it's almost like it's alive. It's a history of this country. This is the third day of Shanghai, and it was such an afternoon delight for me. We went into the Three on the Bund. It's a Michelin star restaurant, and it has catered to Cantonese cuisine, and the restaurant is called the Canton Table. When we enter this restaurant, immediately I feel the quality, and the most important, what I really, really like about this place, the combination of colors of the walls, the pictures, the woman wearing chipaos. The painting of the murals on each wall, which just gave us this ambience and set us into the mood. It brings back that Shanghai kind of feeling, but yet it's also this fusion of modernism. I saw this amazing view from this restaurant, this beautiful river, beautiful buildings. It was so kind of futuristic. It was elegant and kind of glamorous at the same time. 
were able to meet one of the chefs and he was able to make these amazing dim sum for us. You know, when you're looking at his hands, the way he moved, he's dancing and he's creating such a beautiful things. The first dish that came out is the mango dish. Almost like a mango pudding, but yet it was like a soup. The first moment when they brought in our table, I saw this kind of like warm soup. But the moment when I started tasting it, it was like cold, very refreshing. Another dish, it was really unique because it was on a beautiful round plate and it had uni and then the shrimp mixed together it was a great texture and it was wrapped almost like a sushi kind of feeling, but yet it wasn't, it was the dumpling skin. It was very avant-garde. The moment when I started biting it, I realized that you can feel layers. It was very tender, it was like melting in your mouth. And then after that, the third one came, and I thought it was a dessert. It was like an abalone, and I took a bite of that. It was so tender, the abalone was so fresh. When we start eating it, I realized, so this is not a dessert. It's another seafood dish. It's just very crispy and very delicious. So this afternoon after the restaurant, we were able to go to the Paramount. This place has a huge history behind. They're celebrating the 1930s Shanghai. It brought in this kind of shaker and mover kind of time. As I entered into the room, there was this beautiful like red velvet staircase. <laughs> By staring on this beautiful, very expensive, deep red color in combination with gold decoration and black walls, it's just giving you this atmosphere that you are kind of like moving back to 90s, 30s, 1920s. There's one space that we went to enter in, and it was a very special place. One of the most famous singer was there. This is the room where she was preparing for her performances, and this is the room when she was resting and getting ready for big shows. And she's a very famous singer in the 1930s, and her name is Jo Shren. So we entered this room, and this is the moment when I felt like goosebumps on my skin. And then there was a photo of her too, and she's just so gorgeous with her 1940s hair, uh, with the nice little wave and her beautiful eyes and her lips, and just her smile just always lingers with you. I almost had tears in my eyes because you can feel the dynamic. It feels like when you're there, she was there with us too. The way she looked at us from the pictures, that was just an amazing experience, and I'm so grateful that I did experience this. So beautiful. So then I looked where she was performing. So you can see this beautiful stage, you can see this beautiful ballroom. It's like, you know, the ballroom was empty, but for some reason I saw so many people dancing. And I heard her voice singing, which is absolutely amazing. It's it just like little bird singing for you. That was very huge for me, just being there, being together with her. We took a little break and then we came back to the Paramount. Beautiful, amazing live band start playing Latin cha cha. I'm very familiar with this music because I've been dancing with this music for so many years. And then here comes this beautiful woman. She is the singer. She was singing these old Shanghai songs. <laughs> She had this beautiful, like, subdued, kind of peach, sparkly chi pao. With lots of embroidery, so she was so elegant, so feminine, 
and she starts singing this beautiful song. I don't understand the language, but I think sometimes when any artist performing, you don't need to know language. It was so beautiful, and of course, you can see a couple dancing. I just feel like I want to dance. And I just really want to support this beautiful woman, this beautiful singer, with me dancing in front of her. After that, we were able to meet the founder of this new Paramount now. Mr. John, he was very polite, very gentleman. I believe it was like 19... Uh, 30s to 40s, it was existing in a very strong way, and then it suddenly had to change into more of a library. And then after the library, I believe that's when Mr. John came in and said, wait a second, we need to bring this back. We need to bring back Shanghai, our culture. We need to bring back the beautiful essence of that time, the golden age. He said that they are trying and working really hard to make this happen for new generation to be involved and be educated about the history of this place, about the history of the country. How beautiful is this that we can experience this now at this moment, at that time when it was in the 1930s? I'm so happy that there's still people who patiently believes and really want to bring that time, the purity, the real history back into our days and educate people and share with people. I think this is very beautiful. Today is the fourth day in Shanghai. In the morning we stopped by this beautiful, very little small boutique with lots of beautiful chipao dresses. We saw these beautiful racks of eclectic designs of cheap house. This little boutique store has been around for almost like, I guess, within four generations. Which is, I think, amazing because the only this way you can not share with all the world and just have this uniqueness. They actually create each piece from the trim to the pencos to the buttons. They even handmade them in their own little atelier space. So she showed me the stitching on them too, as well as the fabric design and the fabric choices. You can find this particular fabric with this particular print only in their store. Then you also can find very updated, very modern style of cheap outs, right? So you can really tell that designer put so much creativity, but trying to still keep the original details in cheap out. I loved how she would put the brocades on. The salesperson told me about who the designer was. Your sister, as I understood, the designer, and she's the one who designed all these dresses in this boutique. Her mother taught her, and her mother now is 77, and she still does create all her cheap house. After I, we were done exploring this beautiful store, I decided I wanted to order one piece. And I decided to choose one where it was like a little piano print. It was a vertical print, which was really nice because I'm very petite, so I felt that design line would be very complimentary on me, as well as the lace that was trimmed around, which just, it just was feminine. I had a gentleman, which I'm sure he must have been one of the families. He said, okay, would you like this to be comfortable or would you like to, this to be beautiful? And what he meant by beautiful is by having it more form-fitting. And I said, I definitely want it to be beautiful. And so he sculpted it on my body. And this piece is going to fit like a glove. And I'm really excited because it's going to be due in about two or three days, which is lovely. So in the afternoon, after lunch, I knew that we were going to um, see the Gu embroidery, but I didn't know much more about it. I did read a little bit about it and um, how it's 400 years old. It's definitely from the Suzhou embroidery and, and definitely reflects Shanghai. We entered in the gates and we saw this amazing building. I was going, wow, is this where the Gu embroidery is going to be? And we walked up the staircase up to three floors 
And then I turn into this room, and it's this very humble, simplistic room with a few women embroidering. And the next thing you know, they said, well, um, Colleen, you're going to be meeting the master who creates um, all these beautiful embroideries. So I'm going straight into there, and there she is. I never saw this type of woman in my life. She was just like a glass, clean as a glass, you know, so pure, so natural, so shy at some point. It makes me feel like I want just give her a hug. And I almost felt at home, but yet I felt like this high respect for her. But she made me feel so comfortable in a way that even though she's like the highest of the highest, so I wanted to kind of just first um, just watch her. It's all about um, learning with the master. And when I look at it, I thought, oh my God, so she has uh, kind of like a picture in front of her and that's what she's trying to repeat and put it on fabric. And then when I get closer to this and they explain that this is actually not a picture. This is her work. This is what she made using threads. I was going, oh, wow, wait a second. This looks like a watercolor painting. The fabric was embroidered. I was mesmerized. I've never seen a stitching like this. I never saw this tiny little needle in my life. And this is what she's working with. And the thread, as I understood it from silk, and then she started pulling it apart constantly, like not stopping. And then it's getting like thinner, thinner and thinner. It's almost you don't see it. And then that's what she's using for uh, to embroider this beautiful fabric. And my reaction was I start crying. This is how it touched me, you know, her work and her personality. No. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this uh, type of art is just one of the most beautiful art because, you know, by stitching and by creating like huge pictures on a piece of fabric, it's just amazing. So we were able to sit down with her and she shared um, two museum pieces with us. The first one had to do with nature and it had the brush strokes going on. It was actually looking like it was a watercolor and the ink was bleeding, but she made this interpreted into embroidery. The second piece that she showed was a landscape piece. There's different trees in Chinese watercolor, and she definitely was able to create the flow. This is definitely the most advanced high technique. To work on one piece, it doesn't take like two or three days. It takes like half a year, from half up to one year. Every stitch, every touch has so much love into this beautiful art what she is creating. You cannot buy your art, it's just only in museums. Can you imagine how unique and special she is? What a precious time for us to be able to see her create museum work that's gonna be permanent collection and it's gonna be in our cultural heritage in China. Today, we're able to see a beautiful factory as well as a museum, and the name is called Du Jian Sheng. And this was founded in 1922. And Du Jian Sheng was a pioneer and entrepreneur, and he is the first one that started the silk brocade. We had this opportunity to understand how the birth of the silkworm happens. I saw this glass flask where you can see every step from beginning to the actual silk thread. And one of them is about the eggs, which is the eggs of the caterpillar. We also saw the next step. You have this beautiful silk worm, which is eating this amazing, organic, beautiful green color leaves. Which is the mulberry leaves. And then you have this beautiful cocoon. And this cocoon is the key to the silk thread. From the silkworm, it becomes the thread and also it becomes into fabric. So the second part that was so fascinating was they took us over to this really small little area where the silk thread is manually made. You have this old-fashioned 
machine. Now, this is truly an original, and I'm not sure, but I think it was originated during 1922 when they used this in the first beginnings of how they made the silk thread. And then you have this lots of cocoons, which is deep into certain temperature water. And why is it in hot water? So that it just kind of warms the threads, and so that the threads can kind of come up, and it starts dividing, and the threads start becoming more individual. Now, if we don't do this temperature of hot water, what happens is the silk will break. It's so delicate. You have to have seven cocoons to be able to create one thread because one of cocoon, when you even just pull it, you don't even see it because how thin it is, right? So when you put it together, then you will create one thread. They gave me the opportunity to sit there and I'm turning this reel and the thread is being created. It was just a really huge experience for me because you know, you're just like touching the past. You're touching the history of it, it's amazing. It takes about four months to reel this in completely. If you ever stretched this silk thread, it's about 1,000 meters, which is quite long. After sewing this old-fashioned machine, in the next room when we moved, we saw the modern machine. In the 1960s, they started to upgrade this into a more productive way. And because of this new technology, a new machine, modern machine, this one person can actually do and use six machines at the same time and it had 20 reels. They would have a little island of water with the little cocoons there, and they're all like bobbing because they all have their little seven threads. And then she will just pull in one thread, and they're all working at the same time. It's such a beautiful picture because, you know, when she pulled this all seven to one thread, the cocoons are moving in this water, and it looks like they're just dancing. It looks like they're talking to you. Next, we went over to the other room where I saw this huge weaving machine. The master that I was able to meet taught me how to weave. And I go into here. Oh, and to move this in, to tighten it. And then he started teaching me, he started to explain to me the order, what I should do, how I'm using these certain parts of this machine just to create this movement. I still don't understand how human being can create this because it's just built and has so many details. This is the original way of how silk weaving was made. The next step they call pattern design and notation design. Before they start weaving this, they have to create design, they have to create the sketch, the picture. And as I look through, there's a watercolor painting which is her painting that she's going to create a gigantic tapestry. So it, she had tiny little grids, maybe about 1 8th or 1 16th, and little tiny grids to give the control of the tapestry stitch. Every dot she made in this sketch is just a thread. The colors and the shape is just, it's amazing. It's very much couture. Also, this may take over two months, can you believe this? Just to do the little paintings of it. The other process that I saw was the templates. Templates are the ones that create the image into the weave. And then the guy who was explaining and teaching us, he's also a master and he's also spent more than 40 years of doing this with lots of love and passion. And he has in front of him is a picture of the painting. He would create um, the punch holes for the colors and then he would press it down. It was like a gigantic little punch hole. It was like music notes. We start asking him like, what exactly you do right now? And when he said that I'm just working in this particular color, in this particular piece, it was mesmerizing. It's just like, wow. It takes two months for this particular template to finish this design. This is unbelievable. So and then we went to the actual factory. There were about 20 different variations of thread colors of the silk. We went over to the end of the area and there is the looms. So they're computerized. Isn't that cool? They have this so the looms are computerized so that the templates are so much more easier to produce the tapestry. 
on every machine controlled by women. She's constantly looking as everything is going right. And then every machine has different fabrics to produce. This machine has kind of like two sides, right? So on one side you see all these threads going in certain directions. And then on the other side you do see the actual product. So you see this beautiful silk fabric with patterns. When you're designing the tapestry, the tapestry is going to be on the bottom side. And sometimes they'll have a mirror there or something to see it. But um, this one, they just flipped it up, and I saw this beautiful, like, the red pillow with brocade. So intricate, it was almost like a museum piece. And I was so inspired in awe because this was computerized, but yet it was still keeping the integrity and the virtue of the way of weaving the tapestry brocade. Today we're at Hangzhou Silk Market, the most heavenly place for silk. And do you know this place is 32 years old and wow. it stretches for half a mile? That's incredible. It's endless, right? I know, the diversity. And, oh my of god, there's so much silk. It's definitely heavenly silk here. Beautiful place. Everything was made in silk. It's so beautiful because there were shirts. That's cool. There were pajamas. There were cheap house. There were scarves. You can find anything here. Anything what makes women feel beautiful, comfortable, and sexy. Everything you want, you can be shopping there and find something special. When we were walking in the store with scarves, I will touch it and I realized I just catch myself in one thing that I really start appreciating more silk than I did before. And the reason why I do this, because I know a little bit more about, I know about the process how it makes, which steps it goes through. It's unbelievable. Definitely, wow. this has a nice weight to it. This is very Great beautiful. Body. Thank you so much for sharing. Today, this afternoon, we had this great opportunity to meet this groundbreaking, innovative designer, Gong Hong Yu. We entered into her showroom, and we were able to see all her poetic pieces. And when I say poetic, she's a poet and also a couture designer. The way she will choreograph the fabrics, it looks so organically done and it looks so beautiful together. She just chose different fabric textures, you know, from chiffon to charmeuse to crepe to something structural like a satin. It's almost like their fabric was like their paint set and she was able to mix them all up. But she made this beautiful collage. And uh, she started six years ago, actually, but she has such a wealth of knowledge, diversity. Um, she has been studying in Korea and also in Paris, and also she has come to America, too, as well. So this diversity, um, this melting pot of fusion of education and fashion has made her become this beautiful designer. Her style is so unique. She does love to use different shapes of sleeves, as well as her silhouettes on her skirts. And it has this French flair, but mixing even maybe the Korean style, a little bit of mix of everything, but also, of course, paying homage to the cheap hell. She's trying to create as modern as possible, but you still can see this beauty of cheap hao in her details. She's not afraid to step out of the box and make it very different from original cheap hao dress. And she will also put certain twist into this, like for example, when you have these traditional buttons in Chipao, she will use her logo, which look amazing, and it also made in the same principle of Chipao button dress. And then I want with this kind of clothes, what kind of feeling for the clothes? We sat with her, and she talked about her journey and how she designs. She'll design a Chipao, and yet that cheap hao will actually metamorph into a photograph of her wearing your cheap hao and from that process she creates her poetry. And we of course we ask her if you can read one of your poems to us. Hui Hui Shou Bi Lan Xia Zhi Ye De Bu Pi Yao Chen Zhi Ye Si Hai Long Wei Ai Ren Feng Yi Jian Yue Se Qi Pao that was amazing. I asked her, so when was her first time that she ever wore her cheap pal? 
she didn't know about Chipao. Until after um, six years ago, after she came back from Los Angeles. And from the moment when she was introduced herself to this dress and she started wearing, she was falling in love with Chipao dress and it was her huge, huge inspiration. So I've been talking to her about this and I was saying, well, so what are, who are your clientele? And she said, well, they're the 20 year olds, you know? And I go, wow, she makes it dance and she makes it more exciting because the young ones need that. This is her way to make the younger generation understand the history and make them loving the cheap out dress. I feel that she's a, a new living legend that's happening and I wish her all the best. Today was just such a wonderful full day. I had this beautiful opportunity to meet this designer and her name is Yutsa. Now what does her name mean? Well it means leaves. This is the biggest store in Shanghai I saw from every store I saw. Ooh. Oh, I want that's this. Beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> the first cheap house she wanted to show us, which was one of her favorites, it was like a peachy kind of neutral color. It was like a garden of flowers and a mixture of butterflies, like everything that I love, and also this beautiful branch of this almost like Chinese watercolor painting. But she was telling me she kind of mixed it with Baroque as well. She will take traditional embroidery with traditional colors with traditional symbols like butterflies, birds, dragons, and she will twist this with very beautiful fabrics. Wow, I love it. She has this way of playing with her translucent fabrics and embroidering them. So you may see the outline of the body in the lining, but then this translucent Cheap Hal is on top of it with the dimension of the embroidery. By walking through the pieces, she also shared few of them, which is kind of reminds me 1920s and 1930s. And I said, I can see famous singers wearing this dress so back elegant. into the 20s. Like, well, yes, that's so true. Wow. She showed us this glass case, and what was there was this beautiful black brownish huge, timeless, beautiful robe in gold embroidery. It's so classic, and also it's kind of unisex. Oh my god. It's just incredible. Yes. So beautiful. You need to wear, you need to buy this. Wow. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> oh wow, this is so elegant. That's incredible. We also stepped into her bridal area, and her favorite color for bridal is, of course, red. In Chinese tradition, red is like good luck, it's celebration, and also for bridal, there's a little bit of a green to it too, which I just learned. So it gives this festive feeling and celebration. You can tell that this person has very strong knowledge about what she does, about her vision, about her desire to show beautiful things through cheap out dresses. She is so brilliant in a way that she can be both designer, artist, and as well as business person. So that was very impressive. This afternoon, we went to visit a historical preservation place. I had the chance to touch the roots of Chinese history of Chipao dress. I got to meet this beautiful woman. Her name is Jing Ji. The mom of this family. She did little lesson showing us how she will cut Chipao dress using fabric immediately, putting pattern on fabric. That was mesmerizing because you can really tell by watching her that she can do actually this dress with your eyes closed. So I got to meet the mother's daughter, which her name is Zhang Jin. She showed us a few pieces from her collection. From more than hundreds years, more than 200 years. 
they're taking me back to this beautiful education that I could never get anywhere. The first historical robe that she brought out was this imperial robe, so absolutely gorgeous, and it was a gift for the Empress. The details were so intense in a way that there were a lot of longevity, calligraphy motifs, with particular butterflies on the edge that has this particular piping, and it's cut out so that it has this dimension and depth, which I've never seen in my life before. Imperial Embroidery is a collection of the best embroideries from different styles. They work exclusively for Imperial Court. The next piece that I saw, which is 200 years old too, and she had a hundred beautiful hand silk embroidered butterflies. And each butterfly had its own little character. But what gravitated me to me was it, was it was so delightful, the color, so fanciful. One of the pieces which I really, really like, also in this beautiful navy blue color with beautiful embroidery right in the center from front and back. This beautiful piece was worn by officials. I saw this beautiful piece. It's 250 years old. It's about 100 birds. So the first front part of it has these beautiful shapes of Chinese birds. There are motifs of the ocean and goldfish. We had the opportunity to flip over. Again, the birds are just so extraordinary. There was this huge crane in the back and the other birds were just dancing around them. So Zhang Jin just told us this special story about how she just loved the special historical robe and she had to have it. You know, she just had to have it because it was just so like precious to her. And so what happened was for exchange, in order for her to get her robe, she had to exchange her BMW X5. And so what happened was they drove off with the X5 and she got her robe. What really mesmerized me all the time looking at these different pieces, that I'm present, I'm here, and I have this great chance just to touch the history of this dress. So I think these things happening once in your life, and I very much appreciate this. I need to be educated about the past, because from the past is what I can learn for my future. We have to go back in time and also pay homage to the lineage of our ancient tradition. Wow. Today is our last day in Shanghai, and I feel a little bit sad because I don't feel like leaving. I would like to stay here a little bit longer because I'm so much in love with this place. Visiting back in China again has just made me connect more to my heart and my real home. I had two chi pao's made. The first shop where I picked up my first chi pao is called Li Gu Lo. Please, please let me see my chi pao. Okay, wait, this is so beautiful art, guys. Right? And it's custom made. Oh, this makes me cry. I love it. It's just so beautiful. I've never had anything so beautiful. And when I saw it, just on, you know, the hanger, I was ready in awe. I was like falling in love with my Chi Pao. It's like my roots, too. And then again, it's bringing back my lineage of my, my mother and my grandmother. I feel like they're both watching me. And they're going, wow, Colleen, please try it on. Um, they were with me. Oh my God. Oh, look at you. This is so beautiful. Oh my God. Oh, oh yes, I am. I am. All right. Okay. That looks so amazing. Absolutely. You look gorgeous. I feel almost like refined in a way that 
I've never felt that way in my life before. That was truly a transformational time for me too, feeling like a woman and celebrating and not feeling shy about it. Like being able to feel confident about my body shape and also walking in this chipao and honoring my Chinese culture. Are you happy? I'm just exceedingly, like extremely, absolutely happy. In the second store is Han Yi. We pick up another one, which is black color with a little bit embroidery. Wow! Oh my God! You look amazing. This is so beautiful. Oh my God! You, you look so sophisticated in this dress. Such a beautiful sleeve there, and look at this lace. This little touch. Ooh. It feels like you want to dance tango. I do. Right? I do. <laughs> okay. I know, I feel so good. How do you feel in this dress? I just feel beautiful. I I feel like it's my second skin. I, as I'm wearing this right now, I'm transformed. I feel empowered as a woman. And you know, during the Chi Pao time, when it first originated, it was in the 1920s, and the women were liberated now. They were able to show their bodies a little bit more. Of course, it's much more reserved still and dignified, but we had this kind of way of showing our expression of our body. We didn't have to hide it. When proudly Chinese woman wears this dress, she delivers and she projects a lot of power, love and passion to this country and their culture. Oh. <laughs> Amazing, beautiful, cool. At the end of my trip, I feel grateful. I feel humbled. I feel in touch with my own Chinese culture. This was a huge impact for me, being here in Shanghai, because I learned so much, I saw so much, and it's just the amount of emotions I went through being here is just amazing. Definitely this trip has over, over exceeded my expectations. And, you know, I definitely was excited about learning about the Chipao and the whole origination of it, the history and everything like that. I learned so much about myself being in this trip. I received so much knowledge and so much inspiration. I think this is amazing and I will remember this for the rest of my life. There's just this beautiful um, calmness and tranquility when you get to understand yourself even more, why you're a certain way, um, why do we have these principles, why do we have these values and morals, um, it just makes more sense when I come back here because everyone feels the same way here. Like I don't have to feel so righteous sometimes. I don't have to feel so uh, simple and pure. Um, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to just be honest. And it's okay to just uh, do your work you know, work really hard and be dedicated and disciplined and, and just do it with um, a beautiful heart.